Hi, my name is Anders Jensen. Let's learn some UiPath. Today we will solve the RPA challenge part one in where uh, we have to put some data in some input forms and we can download an Excel sheet. I did that and we get some data here. First name, last name, company name, role in company, address, email and phone number. And each of the corresponding uh, the data in the rows we have to put in the forms here and then click submit and then we'll take the next row next row next row so we'll do it 10 times that uh, could be an easy task however these input fields they will shift in position so we can't really rely on the position in which they are now like first name can be down here next time and address up here and so that will change so we need to think of another solution let's head to UiPath and solve the problem I will just um, close the data down here. And then first we will uh, read in the data. So click activities, then we will need a read range. We'll just take the workbook instead of the Excel, that's easier. The workbook path, that's where you saved your data. I saved mine on the desktop. So then the, in the range, we'll just delete everything and we'll just take the entire sheet. And then we'll output it to a variable called DT challenge, we can call it. That will be the data. And we need to click start to start the challenge and then we can type in. So we'll before we start the actual loop, we'll just use a click here. We'll indicate that on screen. Start like this. We can change the title display name to start here. Yeah. And now we need to, let me open the data again. We need to iterate through uh, each row in the data. So first we need the first row then fill it in, click submit then take the next row and so on. So that'll be a for each row like this, drag that in. That'll be for each row in DT challenge. Just delete this. So what can we use if we want to find out um, like first name and that corresponding input field when it changes position? That's a, we can use a, a, an anchor base and search for that. What that does is it's we define an anchor in where you have had to look and then, um, so we just say, look for, look for first name, like define this as an anchor and then look uh, down um, from the anchor then uh, you should type something in here so wherever uh, this field is if it's down here we it will find it so let's see how that works we will search for a find element drag that into the anchor here we will indicate um, the anchor that's the we can start with the first name that's up here like it we could have chosen the email as well and then we will um, type something in so we will type we will indicate that on the screen as well it will be here so now we got a find element and a type into um, however with this solution we need to create eight anchor bases uh, seven anchor bases sorry and that could be quite a mess so that's not an elegant solution. So how can we solve it? Maybe we could look at the selector and defined element. So let's do that. Edit selector. And we can see that the selector contains a first name. And if we chose like, let's indicate, for example, the last name here, then we can look at this selector. And we can see that the only thing that changes that just is and it changes to last name. So how about making a dynamic selector in where we just uh, make this a variable and in which uh, that will change its value every time we run through a loop. So why not create another for each row in where we have uh, all the seven uh, names in it and um, make that a dynamic solution as well as here in when we type into. Let me, we can just indicate just for like this, good practice. So now what should we do? Well, we should make it for each row more. And why should we do that? Well, just let me drag this in. Then we need to think that we should loop through, like a, for each row, like create a data table with the seven, um, like the seven headers here: first name, last name, company name, 
it's the ones that are, that are here as well. So we will build a data table. Build data table, we could drag it in up here. We will output it to control K, DT columns, like this. And in the data table, we will just have uh, one column. And that could be like first name, was it last name? Let's look at what we got more. We got company name. We got rolling company. We got address. We got email. And we got phone number. Like this. So this one should do it. Now we build the data table and now we can iterate through like each of these strings to um, make a dynamic selector. So uh, let's first uh, delete this body and we will drag the anchor base in the body here. And let me, I really hate this sequence because that's just, uh, it will, we are just, it's just confusing us. So you don't have to do this. We'll just cut this and then we will delete the sequence and paste it back. So we got rid of that sequence. So now we need to iterate through each of the elements in this data table. That will be, I think we'll take it for each line so we don't get confused with this um, row line thing. That will be the DT columns like this. And now we can create a dynamic selector. So how do we do that? Well, we click here and I think actually we will click up here, target, and then click the selector, find the first name here, and we should write. We just need the first, uh, we just need the, uh, we just need whatever it's in the, the first column of the data table because there's only one. And how do we do that? Well, let me see here. It can be a little bit confusing, so we need quotation marks, then plus, and then we will uh, find the first, uh, that's the line item zero, like this, to a string. And I wrote it here. Oh, we will take a look at it. It's more easy to do it afterwards. So this one will just take whatsoever in the column, in the first column, and write it to a string and, and put it in these uh, single quotation marks here. In that's that, and that's what we want because it will take first the first line that will be the first name. Then we will take the last name, company name, and everything for each row of this. So. Now we fixed the selector. Let's fix what we should write in. So let's say that we just had the, um, we will usually we would, we would just have wrote, if we hadn't had this inner loop, we would just uh, put in the row item and then their uh, column name. Like if there was the first name, that will just be the first name and then to string. However, now, uh, this is this is the dynamic part, like this first name thing. So we could just reuse this. We will need uh, double quotation marks, and then we'll just need the line item again to string plus, and then double quotation marks. That should do it. And now we just need to press submit, and then we are done. We just need to have it like outside of. This because this one will run seven times, then we click submit, like that's for each row. Let's uh, make a click, and it'll be just outside the blue thing. Here, what should we click? We should just click the submit, and this one should work. Let's close down the data and run the whole thing, and hopefully, we've done everything right, and we will win in this RPA challenge part one. So now UI path will run. Jane Dorsey Medicare. It will run like yeah, it will run ten rounds. So you can see that it's changing. However, it looks like that uh, it works. Submit. That's the fourth round. It can be a little bit boring to look at. You can fast forward like 
half a minute if you don't want to hear me talk about uh, nothing for five rounds. This one is a good challenge and I think you should uh, think of it like of course you learned that uh, the Yankee bass thing but I think you should uh, the most important lesson uh, of this was the dynamic selector. I think you can use that a lot in your later work that's uh, something I use a lot of course the Yankee bass as well and uh, just do a lot of these challenges and uh, take a lot of YouTube uh, lessons either from me or from someone else that you think is good because uh, everyone can learn you a lot that was uh, how I got uh, good at it so uh, now it's the second last round we just need to 10 and let's see if we got 100% uh, phone number like this and we got 100% uh, seven out of uh, seven, 70 out of 70 fields in 90 seconds. UiPath is not the fastest RPA software, however, however, it's quite reliable and it got almost unlimited possibilities. So yeah. you can probably uh, make a faster solution in some other RPA software, but this one is really reliable. And um, this would it, that, that's it for now for the part one of the RPA challenge. Um, be sure to subscribe to my channel and what's like the uh, f uh, coming RPA challenge solutions. And that's it for today. Have a good day. Bye bye.